Okay, our very last ever math topic, yay, is uh, permutations and combinations. So uh, permutations and combinations, there's basically three separate types of them, and we'll go over all three. But permutations order matters. So we care about order. In combinations, uh, order doesn't matter. Order doesn't matter. So for instance, um, permutation, a pretty easy one would be like, how many different ways can three people stand in a line? So the order matters because if it's person one, two, three, that's different than person two, three, one, for instance. Um, combinations would be like, how many different groups of two people can you make from a group of six people? Um, and then there are three separate types of both of these. So I'll go ahead and write this out for you guys. Okay, so you can order a sequence of things, take things from different groups, or take a small group from a big one. Okay, so ordering a sequence of things, um, taking things from different groups, and taking a small group from a big one are going to have different answers, or different ways to answer. So, um, in the first one, you're going to do what I like to call a uh, hangman, and I'll explain that in a second. So, I'll show you example problems for all of these. Um, to take things from different groups, you would multiply your number of options, so that's in each of the groups, and then three, you would use the formulas. So the formulas, uh, we'll, we'll get into them in a second, but they're also in your calculator. So they're NPR and NCR, and you'd find them under your math function buttons. All right, but in the meantime, let's go ahead and let's go uh, over one problem for each of these types so you guys can kind of see what to do. Okay, so here's our problem. How many four-digit numbers have one or six as their hundreds digit and two as their one digit. Alright, so uh, this is how you would solve it. You do your hangman. So you set up your four digits and then you fill in on top the information you have. So I know that I have two as the ones digit, so I put two up there and then it says one or six in the hundred slot. So one or six goes up here. So then uh, the other options they don't tell us, so we have to figure out on our own. So um, in our 10 slot, we could have 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, or 9. So we have 0 through 9. And then in our thousandths digit, um, we can't have the same 0 through 9, because if this was 0, it would become a three-digit number. So we'd have to say 1 to 9. So then all you have to do is you count the number of options that's up above and put that in parentheses down below. So one to nine is nine options. One or six, that's two options. Zero through nine is 10 options. And just the number two is gonna end up being just one option. So uh, now you've had everything kind of nicely set up. All you have to do is just multiply the bottom row. So you just say nine times two times 10 times one. So you would get, let's see, 18 times 10 times 1, and that would give you 180. So you have 180 options. So anytime you're just ordering things, all you have to do is draw out uh, the number of things, number of slots that you have, put the options on top, and the number of options on the bottom, multiply the bottom row. Simple as that. All right, so next up is when we have uh, items from different groups. Okay, so how many outfits does Sally have if she has five shirts, five pairs of pants, and two hats? And we have to assume that an outfit consists of one pair of pants, one shirt, and one hat. So um, whenever you're taking items from different groups, unrelated groups like shirts, pants, and hats, all you have to do is just multiply your options. So it's very similar to the first thing that we did. You just take your number of options, put them in parentheses, and multiply them. So five times five is 25 times two. 50. So a surprising 50 options from her assumingly very limited wardrobe. All right, and then uh, the next one is kind of the more complicated one. Okay, so how many groups of five people can you form from 10 people? 
All right, so this is the kind of more complicated version um, of a permutation or combination problem. This is when you're taking a small group, five people, from a big group, ten people. Notice that the people, people is the overall group, those are the same thing. And that's why we're not going to do what we did with Sally's hats and shirts and pants. So in this kind of problem, you solve using the formulas. So let me give you the formulas for a permutation. Um, if you're trying to find how many, uh, you know, items you're going to get, you'd have n factorial over quantity of n minus r factorial. And for combination, you would have n factorial over r factorial times n minus r factorial. So those are the two formulas. These formulas, both of them, are actually in your calculator as NPR and NCR. N is the bigger number. So N is your big number or your big group, and R is your small number. So if you're going to put them in, you put in, you know, for instance, in this problem, because order does not matter, it's a combination. If I was just putting in my calculator, all I'd have to do is say, okay, it's 10C. 5, and that's all I would have to do for that. Um, but let's go ahead and let's manually do it in case anybody's calculator, you know, dies on test day or something along those lines. PS, extra batteries, fix that problem up real nice. So uh, we know it's a combination, so we're going to do 10C5. So I would say, okay, that's 10 factorial divided by 5 factorial times... 10 minus 5 factorial. So factorial is like 10 times 9 times 8 times 7 times 6 times 5, 4, 3, 2, 1 over 5 factorial uh, would give us 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. And then that's being multiplied by 10 minus 5, which is just 5 factorial again. So 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. So the first thing that I would do is I would uh, cross out one set of 5 factorials because we don't need them. So da da makes our life a little bit easier. And then you would want to start multiplying. And you obviously you could simplify by saying like, okay, 8 is just 4 times 2, so you could cross out this 4 and put a 2 up here. Um, and, you know, you could do the same thing and say, like, all right, 3 uh, times 2 is 6, so I'm just going to put a 2 up there. I could do the same thing with the 10 is a 2 and get rid of my 5. And now all I have is 9 times 7 over 2 times 1, which is probably a lot nicer than what we were looking at before. Um, so we've got, let's see, 9 times 7, so we've got 63 divided by 2. Oh, let's see. Oops, a daisy. I see a mistake. I'm not reading the green. So, sorry, the 2s are still there. So 2 times 9 times 2 times 7 times 2 divided by 2. So we actually could, if we wanted to, cross out one of these 2s. So we've got 2 times 9 times 2 times 7 divided by now just 1, uh, so it's just 2 times 9 times 2 times 7. So that would give us 252 options. So notice, that's a pretty good amount of options for groups of 5 people. Um, so combinations and permutations a lot of times are going to give you pretty large answers given pretty small inputs. Okay, so that concludes all of the math. Um, you know, feel free to go over any of the uh, math sections that, you know, you might need a little bit of extra help on. But uh, that's all the math that you're going to have to know for the ACT. So excellent job, and I'll uh, see you on the other videos.